Alright, so uh, sitting here by my bedside again and wanted to do a pickup play of those three puzzle games, DS puzzle games, I promise. Yeah, let's just get into it. You know, this is the first one. Kuru Poto Cool Cool Stars. Um, actually, you don't really need to use touchscreen uh, for this one, which... You know, I like that. I like games that uh, offer you both options. So, after uh, playing it for a while, um, it's not as great as I remember. And I'm going to suck at this because I'm not really thinking. But uh, basically in this game, you rotate a box um, and you get to move blocks around a an arena and um, and then you also have a character uh, which is basically this guy right there and you want to line him up with uh, these halos and what these are, are basically they're supposedly like fallen stars um, and then when you reach a goal like that it lights up grabs the halo and shoots up into the sky and completes part of a constellation. It's, it's a mixed bag. Its presentation basically has some really nice art, but at, at times it's just like executed poorly. What I mean is there'll be animations that just seem out of place or the art will p appear kind of rough using certain backgrounds. But um, that's not so much of a problem as um, just pl playing the game, you know, there's, I mean, there's story, I guess, that could keep you going, so that's nice and all, but, um, one of the better things, I'm gonna lower down the music here for a second, one of the better things about most, um, puzzle games are, when you complete a puzzle, you want to go back and be able to play the same level over again, have choice over the level you, um, levels that you've completed, and in this game, it doesn't do that, actually, um, you can, quit and leave but basically if you want to go back into the game um, it will only give you the option to start over from the very beginning or to play or to continue from where you left off you can't just you know play one level over again um, and you can get high scores in this and achieve you know the least number of turns for the cube uh, or for the uh, square to get to the goal um, to make your piece fall into that little halo which is nice and all but uh, like I said you if you wanna master it, you're gonna have to go through the very beginning in order to get you know to a certain level which which sucks and <laughs> I mean it might be later on that once you beat all the puzzles you get to go back but <laughs> You know, as you're playing through the game, you should be able to play Puzzle 2 if you're on Puzzle 7, you know? You should be able to go back. So, yeah. Th also, one thing here I want to note um, is really nice. Like I said, the presentation is a mixed bag. Um, you'll notice here that there's like this little... Maybe you can't really see it. Mm, there you go. There's this little um, disc at the bottom. And... Uh, that disc, that platform that all the characters are standing on in this cutscene, it changes based on the area that you're in. In this area, I'm by a lake. In other areas, there's like a forest or a desert, and, you know, this will be the sand or something like that. But, you know, it's kind of cool um, that that kind of carries through from scene to scene. But, like I said, it's a mixed bag. Very nice art, but when this guy animates this monster, you'll see him kind of jumping up and down but he's connected to his little the wakes of the um, the water the way the, the water is supposed to move or you would expect it to move there you can see that it looks really cheap and yeah the puzzles in the game actually aren't that very hard it's a pretty I like the cute character the look of the cute characters and the, the levels and it was only a dollar so I wouldn't pay more than that I remember seeing this game brand new I think when it came out was 10 or 15 bucks that was still too much for me I played a ROM of it <laughs> only for a little bit but uh, it was just you know 
it, it might be something to waste your time on. All right, there we go. Um, but either way, I think I'm done talking about this game. Um, I don't recommend it, but if it's under a dollar, get it. <laughs> um, if you if you like puzzle games and you, you know you want to waste some time thinking about these um, puzzles, but like I said, they're not too challenging. Let's move on to the next game. This one's from the now defunct, unfortunately, Hudson Soft. Oh my goodness. There we go. I haven't played, I mean, I have a ROM of this already. I have unlocked more levels. I haven't played the card yet. Um, and of course, it's all new files. But basically, the, the game is like a, uh, um, lights out kind of, kind of game. Where, you know, you light up, or you, you touch a square, and, uh, in this, in this case, a hexagon, and it changes the colors of the surrounding hexagons and you want to it tell it gives you like a par for each puzzle and you want to clear it um, on with that many uh, taps or less if you tap this square here it'll flip all the surrounding squares so to flip the color of that square you touch or that rec hexagon you touch but also flip the color of the surrounding ones and if I flip this one for instance it would uh, well I'll just show it to you it'll flip the color of this one and all the surrounding ones and so these will be orange that's where I foot touch this one um, and you can complete a puzzle with ho however many uh, taps as you want it's not going to penalize you however you know over here you can see it says minus six you want to try to get it under par and it's not really, it's, there's no time limit on, on these, um, so there's no, you don't feel rushed. Um, there's some, some nice soothing music and cool backgrounds, and you can unlock more as you play the game. This is what's happening on the top screen, kind of like, you know, those synth uh, visualizations. You know, this is the first puzzle of the entire game, so it starts off very easy. And... You know, the, the main point, um, or the main gameplay element is, uh, you know, you tap a square and it changes the color of the surrounding squares, but then there are also um, special rectangle, or um, hexagons that do, that clear more than one, or that affect um, hexagons in a s s certain way and you can even see here like the, the presentation is done really well like um, the way you unlock or choose to unlock levels instead of being like level 1, level 2, level 3 um, basically when you when I clear level 1 the um, three hexagons around that hexagon opened up so I can choose you know um, puzzles from level two and of course, obviously uh, as you go down the um, the levels there's level one stage level three stage one the strategy for them is a little bit more difficult to figure out I remember playing this for three hours at the airport um, well that doesn't work uh, waiting for a plane What's great about this one, this game, is that, you know, because it, allow, it allows you to choose from different levels of difficulty, um, you can unlock them at different times. Like, I, I was able to get to stage 3 difficulty um, very early on. You, you know, you can, you can put down a puzzle and jump back into it, uh, go back to a puzzle that you completed before to get um, familiar with maybe some of the techniques you forgot. Um, in some of the puzzles, you know, you'll you'll learn a technique for solving that puzzle, and you can apply it to a future puzzle. It's a really good. Um, that's sort of a sign of a really good puzzle game where you can actually see the methods uh, for solving puzzles being carried through to you know future stages, and using the combinations of those techniques. Basically, critical thinking is being applied. You're using um, combinations 
to solve uh, combinations of old knowledge to solve a new puzzle. Um, so here's an example of power-ups. And you can see that um, there are these arrows. And when you, you tap them, it, it uh, instead of clearing the you know the normal um, hexagons that are touching each side, it only clears in that row and in, in itself. So this one actually goes in two directions. Um, you can see it clear. See these uh, this area over here. Normally they're like these little um, those power-ups that those like arrows and sometimes you can drag and drop them onto the board and use them um, as a turn uh, and you know tap it just like it, as if it were already there but you get to pick the spot where you that power up is and you can see how you know all just the combination of these different power ups and um, special hexagons you can make a really challenging puzzle. Yeah, like I said, it's very challenging. But still, I got, this is to me one of the best puzzle games I've ever played. It's uh, it's very engrossing. Like I said, each the um, challenges seem to really progress in a nice fashion. I don't really feel like um, too difficult from each one. And I love the presentation. Like I said, everything kind of like the he using the hexagon shape, basically, you know, the bees and the, how they store the honey and such. And that, that presentation is, is followed through everywhere in the game. Um, let's see. I'm going to show you how you can change the backgrounds and stuff. And see, I have like all these question marks here. I can unlock more. Changes the top. Fancy, and I have space on, panel color, change that to blue, purple, orange, I'm going to stick with green, uh, you can change, oh, you can change that crazy visual at the top too, waves, kaleidoscope, wow that one's cool. Um, see what else we got. Uh, so that was puzzle mode. Evolution mode. Um, oh boy, this is sort of like a, uh, I believe, I haven't played too much of it before, but I believe it's like a, uh, like a, uh, like a challenge mode thing. Um, try to get the best score. Well, why don't we just play it? Because I really don't remember. Same color. You know, it really is like, um, kind of reminds me of Tetris Attack, you know, like there's these challenge stages, but then there are also like the puzzle stages, and uh, oh, it's such a good game. I, I highly recommend this game, it, even, even if it's more than a buck. I paid, uh, well, I paid less than a buck, but nonetheless, <laughs> if, it's, if it's 10, I, I, it's 20, if you really love puzzle games, this is a great game, and unfortunately, you know, the company that made it is not going to make any more of these. Um, let's move on to another game. This is, you know, you search for the matching blocks, and you can swap them, and then create um, a, a, a combination where, you know, clear stage. So here, down, down here, you can see there are, like, these... Um, blocks and you can swap them and it'll clear that row and um, you know I especially like this game because it has a really cute presentation style again um, kind of like a zoo I mean, it's called zookeeper because I didn't say that but basically all the blocks look like different animals and yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's like a bejeweled kind of game. I haven't played too much of this game, like, before. I haven't played too much of this game. Um, but I only really played the main mode, so that's all I really know about. Um, but, let's see. Let's go quit. Let's see what other stuff we have. Welcome to Start. Mode. 
Level up by capturing 100 animals. Quest. Total of 10 stages. Do not let the curator defeat you and get your point. You have 6 minutes to get the high score. Two player battle. See, quest mode sounds like, again, like those challenge stages. Let's see what this one is. Oh, it gives it a story. Capture 20 lions. Try not to capture other animals. So, it makes it more interesting. These blocks here, I believe they clear. Yeah. They clear the other one. All the when you tap it, it selects um, a certain block, and then clears it. So that one it cleared all the elephants. Can I actually clear a line. I don't think so. Clear! But I really like the art style. It's kind of blocky, kind of, you know, the corners, they're not completely square, but they're smooth. Um, should I go back out of this? It's a very... You know... It's, it's, it's simplistic, but at the same time, it, it has a lot of character to it, you know? The animation's great, it's not... You know, like, out of all these, the, the Kuropoto one was the one that had the, the least... Um, or the most problems with the presentation, but this one, I mean, it's large buttons, very colorful. You can use the D-pad or the touchpad or um, touchscreen. Um, very well done. Again, I mean, I still, I think Honeycomb Beats probably the best one out of all these, but. Uh, you know, Zookeeper is definitely a fun one if you like Tetris Attack um, or Bejeweled or something like that. And, you know, maybe you want something in a different, wrapped in a different, um, cl different clothing, you know. <laughs> Try out, uh, you know, a, a zoo flavored version of it. Nice music, too. I mean. It's a really solid game. It kind of reminds me of a... The style kind of reminds me of a game called Cubivore on the uh, GameCube where you run around as these blocky, simplistic animals that look very much like, you know, this guy there and you eat other animals. Very simple game that was, too. Mmm... Unless, I mean, these, this is only really meant to be a quick look, and I'm, I'm at 20-some minutes now, so... It's three games, I mean, that's a really good... Uh, triple score of puzzle games. And... I hope you've enjoyed them, and maybe, uh... You've got some new games that you want to play. For your, uh, DS.